Mental Health Coaching, The Three Laws and 21 Ways to Mental Health Empowerment. Mental. M is for Mindset. Getting your mindset correct is essential. Where you focus is where you end up. Our mind controls our thoughts. Thoughts create our actions. Actions determine where we end up. Whatever we tell ourselves in our mind on a momentary basis determines our outlook, moods, happiness, mental health and whether we perceive ourselves as successful or not. Mental. E. E is for empowerment. Empowerment is such an important tool in your own life to maximise your own mental health and is a real blueprint in mental health coaching. Empowerment is an overused and misunderstood term. To empower yourself you have to realise that it's a constant process that can never be finite. Empowerment is an ongoing action, attitude, motivation and outcome. At every moment in our lives we have two different voices in our heads. One that says we can do it and one that says we cannot. We may be able to move into the now by accident or on purpose if we look in through a window for example where we live in the present and forget the past and future momentarily. This dreamlike state or daydream like state is very powerful but what people with mental illness need is the ability to stop the negative voices inside their head and flip them around into the positive. You know, when you have a great idea to do something and then you tell yourself immediately, I will do that now, and then as soon as you have said that to yourself, your other half says, I'll do it later. Well, that is you becoming a victim of the law of diminishing intent. People who experience mental illness often lack the confidence to do things. One part of them says, I can do that, and then the other part of them, themselves, says, I can't. Just stop for a moment and think of someone you really admire. Someone who has created something unique. For example, Steve Jobs from Apple. Bill Gates, who founded Microsoft. Usain Bolt, the record-breaking sprinter. All of these people had a vision believed and acted on that vision before it actually happened. In fact, anyone who has been successful at anything has taken action on something where if they had listened to the negative voice that was inside their head they would have achieved far less. Empowerment is a constant battle and struggle against your negative self. You have to pump yourself up. A great metaphor for this is physical exercise. Think of weightlifting and bodybuilding in particular. The more you work on your muscles and the more pain you go through, the more defined your muscles become. Arnold Schwarzenegger used to train in the gym five hours a day. He said that he would push himself even more on the parts of his body where he deemed himself the weakest. Also, someone once asked Muhammad Ali how many press-ups he did a day. He said that he only counts the ones that hurt. Both Arnold and Muhammad have amazing empowerment strategies built into their psyches. Some people just give up. It's as simple as that and they are the ones that disempower themselves and self-manifest their mental illness. I want you to keep moving along, keep pushing and make the positive voice on your head and the negative voice softer. Keep telling yourself that you can do something in the moment as many times as you can. This is something that you will need to do hundreds, maybe even thousands of times a day. Tell yourself to do it now and keep telling yourself to do it now. Then just start doing it. The people who make the most mistakes are also often the most successful. The ones who are prepared to keep trying something many times and in different ways are the ones that come to the top of the tree in any industry. The same is true for whatever subject you are concerned with business, family, relationships, fitness, love. 
Empowerment and mental health empowerment is all about saying yes to life and saying yes to yourself. Accepting what has happened to you, taking responsibility for it and then reprogramming your mind so that you work out a strategy and implement it. Take yourself to the next level and then live the life of your dreams now. And now, and now, that's it, 100 times a day, thousands of times a day. Live the life of your dreams now. Stop procrastinating and get on with it and enjoy the ride. Mental, N, NLP. Is it a pseudoscience or placebo? Is it a pseudoscience or placebo or the best brain tool ever? Neurolinguistic programming, NLP is an approach to communication, personal development and psychotherapy created by Richard Bandler and John Grinder in California, the United States in the 1970s. Its creators claim a connection between the neurological processes, neuro, language, linguistic and behavioural patterns learned through experience programming that these can be changed to achieve specific goals in life. The views on NLP range from a pseudoscience that is at best a placebo to the greatest mind technique ever invented. I first got into NLP or something similar when watching the Paul McKenna TV show in the early 90s. I got really into personal development when I read Anthony Robbins' Unlimited Power in the year 2000. To his credit, Anthony Robbins has his own unique system that is probably even more famous than NLP itself. His book and seminars helped me turn my life around and raise my standards constantly. Whenever I have any self-doubt, I go back to Anthony Robbins as I believe he is unparalleled in the personal development industry. I have trained practitioner and master practitioner level with Richard Bandler. Bandler is an amazing teacher and I highly recommend him as well. Everyone leaves his seminars wiser and happier. Interestingly, Richard says himself that 70% of what people learn and take with them at the seminars is absorbed on an unconscious level and only 30% is on a conscious level. We all have different senses, sight, hearing, feelings, taste and smell. In NLP they call them visual, auditory, kinesthetic, gustatory and olfactory. How we use these senses determines how we experience our lives. So the more we are aware of each of these senses, the more we can alter them in our favour to design the states and the lives that we want. NLP is focused on modelling excellence and eliciting, eliciting the strategies of successful people and copying them. This resonates with coaching. A great example would be a golf coach. If you want to be good at golf, then learn from a golf coach or go even further and learn from one of the greats. Watch interviews with Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholas, Gary Player, Arnold Palmer, Phil Mickelson, etc. See how they think, watch how they play, study as every aspect of their stroke and how they go about their games. People with mental illness really do fill their minds with junk. Get rid of the junk by replacing the negative images you visualise and replace them with positive ones. Make the negative voices positive. Make the nasty smell nice. If you want the positive effect, I recommend Paul McKenna's I Can Make You Happy and Instant Confidence above anything else. They are both really powerful and effective programs and the CD comes free with a paperback on Amazon. Play at night for the most positive effect. Mental. T. Transformation, i.e. the way you think, look, react, be positive, take action. In order to live your life to the fullest and to coach yourself to be mentally well, you have to transform the way you think, behave and act. A great way to mental health coach yourself to do this is to break down every aspect of your life into different sections and ask yourself the following question. In what three ways am I going to raise my standards and get better at this aspect of my life? In what three ways am I going to raise my standards and get better at this aspect of my life? Physical fitness. One. Two. Three. No matter what level you are at, you can always improve. If you are obese and do not work out, start walking one mile a day. 
Take the stairs instead of the elevator or do five sit-ups. If you're an Ironman Pro, push your watt threshold another 20 watts. That can make a massive difference over a 180km bike leg and could be the difference between being and not being on the Ironman podium. Love. One. Two. Three. How are you going to raise your standards and get better at that aspect of your life? If you are happily in love with your partner already, then that's great, but you can still improve the relationship. Instead of giving a kiss when you get home from work, kiss for a moment longer, or give a hug as well, as you look your partner in the eye while you kiss them. Say you love your partner more often, or show you love them by doing something to help out without having to be asked. If you do not have a partner, then work on loving yourself more and see how that makes you feel. Managing my money. How am I going to raise my standards and get better at this aspect of my life? One. Two. Three. If you already manage your money, then that's great, but you can always improve. Increase the amount of money you save per month by 1% every month. Work out more precisely what your incoming or outgoings are. Create a vision of who you want to be and then live into that picture as if it were already true. Arnold Schwarzenegger Being inspired makes you realise that you can make up who you want to be. This is the ultimate self-motivation for anyone, so use it. Some other aspects of your life that you can improve in three ways. Ask yourself, how am I going to improve these aspects of my life? Spirituality. And then write down three ways. One, two, three. Parenting. One, two, three. How are you going to improve your parenting skills. Friendship, socialising, peer group, one, two, three. Every challenge we face improves our skills. Break free from comfort zones. Managing my time, one, two, three. Managing my confidence, one, two, three. How can I improve my confidence? Mental. A. Attitude. Take complete possession of your own mind. You can only control your own mental attitude. You will find when you are ready to seek. L. The L in mental. The end of the first law of mental health impairment. Mental health coaching. Longevity. Keep working on living the life of your dreams, moment by moment, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. And before you know it, when you stop and reflect where you were, you will be amazed at how far you have come. Just keep doing little by little, day by day. Start projects and start your to-do list. The slower, yes that's right, the slower you start them, the quicker you will finish with them as you are doing them. The effect of the action you take will be compounded over time. Great paintings and people are created slowly, piece by piece.